Prayer reminds me of promise that God always hears and answers. Amen? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes wait, sometimes we don't even hear that. And we wait on Him. But we're persistent. It's kind of like breathing. Finding that rhythm. When, when Nick and Sharon are jogging, it's like a, a, a <coughs> rhythm that you need to be breathing into. Or you're just going to, you're going to fall out halfway through the race. To keep running, you've got to have the right breathing time with your running. And so in your pace of life, you have to also pace your prayer time. You can't end up saying, oh, I had no time for prayer today. I thought that was a priority. Priority means to do it first. You put it in the first top thing in your list, and you make time for prayer. We persevere. That's the next one I have written down. Be faithful under pressure. I think when I think of persevering, I think of intercession. Intercession means praying for one another, entering into each other's lives. You know, the devil is an accuser, but evil is on a leash. And when we are presented with untruth, like false guilt in our lives, we need to not give up. Not listen to that. We need to persevere. We need not to obsess over and over. We need to be precise. Next letter, next word down. Not like those uh, pagans in Matthew 6 who heap up with many words or say the same words over and over and over as they have in some other religion. We need to be patient in prayer. God has his timing, and we have ours. <laughs> They're not always in sync. But by being patient, there's something special that happens. Romans chapter 5, verse 4. If you want to just note that down for now, and maybe look it up later. It talks about how going through times of suffering does something deep inside us. The trials in our life, that we're being patient and long-suffering, work through us character. And through the character and the perseverance builds up hope in our life. So I just ask you, if you're feeling a little hopeless, how's your prayer life? It should be passionate. Not just from the heart, Oh, wait, not just from the head, <laughs> from the heart, heart and head put together, the whole person. It depends on who you are and what you're like, but incorporate your imagination when you're reading scripture. Put yourself in there and ask yourself what it would have been like to be there. And turn your scripture reading into prayer. Put your name into the Bible and make it a personal prayer when you're reading through the Psalms. Write your own psalm. You can do that. Prayer is not a time out. <laughs> it's not nap time. Prayer is potent. It is, it is God's stuff. It's not just a pep talk to myself to build myself up. It's deep. It's a God thing. And it takes a lifetime of apprenticeship. Prayer can be prophetic. Prophecy literally means forth telling. Sometimes in the Old Testament and New Testament, we have the gift of prophecy where it's foretelling, saying that God is going to do this. But mostly, prophecy means forth telling. Thus saith the Lord. This is what God thinks. That's a prophetic voice will cry out in the midst of every other noise that's going on trying to compete for our attention and say this is what God thinks to have the courage to be prophetic is not just a gift for some 
But we all need to be bold in speaking of the word of God. Pious and pure. Paul calls us to be holy. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says to be perfect, therefore. But you know, God sees everything. So please don't pretend to be holy. <laughs> don't pretend you've got it all together. Or you make us all feel bad. <laughs> there is grace. Grace that cleanses us. And that is what purifies us. Prayer is a pledge. It is saying yes to God in this life. Amen? Prayer is saying yes. Prayer is provision to what we daily need. We can pray to God as our provider. God is our protector, keeping us safe in the center of His will. We're not insulated from hardship, but we are safe. He's our protector. I'm going to say that again. We're not insulated from hardship, but we are safe. He's our protector. Prayer is penitential, saying sorry, asking for forgiveness, just being ready at a moment to turn your heart in tenderness back to God. The forgiveness part is so important because remember we read, if we don't forgive, what happens? We're not forgiven. We need to be ready to forgive as quick as we are to ask for forgiveness. I like this one. Prayer is Pentecostal. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Spirit came in the book of Acts to help fill Jesus' disciples. Jesus promised that he would send the Spirit as a comforter, as a counselor, as a guide. And so we don't pray alone. The Spirit of Christ prays with us, actually interceding with us in, in groans that we don't even have words to express sometimes. Some of us have experienced uh, the special prayer language of speaking in other tongues. It's a very special thing. You can develop that in your private prayer life. Just ask God to lead you. Trust Him that He gives good gifts. Because that's what He does. Prayer is powerful. We cannot just go through the external forms of religion. Just about everything we've done here this morning is religious. But if we just do the religious externals, we have a dead church going through the motions. Amen. And that scares me. We need to be a people of prayer. And that prayer is powerful. It'll hold together this church. It'll grow this church. It'll change each one of us, which will in turn change the lives of everybody around you. And it goes out wave after wave after wave. Prayer is partnership. We connect in a powerfully electric way. When two or more are gathered, God promises to be in our midst. So if it's 20, 30, or three, it's okay. We can have confidence that God is there in the midst of our unity. That's what counts. Uniformity is death. It's so boring. It's so dull. We're not asking for uniformity for everyone to dress the same and look the same and act the same. We're talking about unity. A deep connection that says we're family. You're family. You're my family. You've prayed for me for so long. You've held in there. You've persevered. And it's been a partnership as we've gone together in this church journey. We exist as a church by interceding for one another. By entering in and standing together with each other. Folks, if we do this, the church cannot collapse. 